There's a new antenna in town at Ranchero K Murder. What's happening guys? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be taking a look at the DX80 Pro antenna from Radio Waves. I had the privilege of speaking with Emmett, the owner of Radio Waves at uh, Hamvention, and he so graciously uh, gave me this antenna. So thank you, Emmett, and, and uh, everyone at Radio Waves. I appreciate the opportunity to play with one of your antennas. So this antenna should be resonant on uh, 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. We shouldn't need a tuner, uh, and we should be able to tune up just about everything else with uh, maybe the internal tuner, maybe the extra, external tuner. I'm not sure, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and set it up here at the house. I'm hoping uh, I've been wanting to switch over from an end fed to an off center fed for a while because they're multi banded. I'm hoping that maybe being a dipole, it might bring my noise floor down a little bit. Maybe end feds have a reputation of being a bit noisier, so we'll see about that. Uh, but I really just wanted to try out a different antenna. I've, I, I talk to uh, the guys at Radio Waves like every ham festival, and I've never used one of their antennas. Uh, they, they always look like really good quality. They're really nice people too. That's, that's kind of the great thing about them. They're nice people and they build what seem to be pretty darn quality antennas. So without any further ado, let's hop on the bench. We'll take a look at some specs. We'll take a look at the antenna and then we'll get it up in the air and uh, look at all this stuff. Here's the literature that comes with it. And you can see it's the DX80 Pro 80 through 10 meters. So we're really 80, 40, 20, and 10 uh, without a tuner, hopefully. Here's an SWR graph. We'll see how that uh, happens in real life, tells you some information about it. And then here's uh, kind of your instruction manual. And I just want to point out uh, a couple things in here. Uh, notice it says, uh, may require adjustment of wire lengths once in place. So they intentionally ship this antenna a bit long. Uh, so you may need to adjust it uh, shorter if it's, if it's too long uh, or if it's too low in frequency. And I also want to point out, it says the best location for this antenna is as high and far away from uh, utility wires as possible. Well, my antenna is not going to be that high and it's not going to be far away from antenna wires. So uh, just know that when we're doing this, I really do not have the ideal location to set up an antenna, but we're going to do it anyway. Quick look at the antenna itself before it goes up in the air and we never see it again. Uh, nice, beautifully built transformer. You can see we're rated. 1500 watts SSB, 800 watts CW, perfect for what I'm doing. I want to be able to run, uh, you know, 100 watts FT8. Nice construction. You got some good wing nuts here. They are uh, soldered on there, and uh, there's some lock washers and stuff. So very nice. A lot of strain relief here on the uh, center holdy do thing. Uh, I won't be using this. I don't have a center support, so it's good that we have some good strain relief because we're going to be pulling on this pretty hard from uh, both sides there. Uh, bottom SO239 and uh, just some nice caps and stuff. This is all just kind of feels like PVC uh, pipe that's that's making this, but um, you can tell there's stuff in there. I mean, I know there's, there's probably, I think there's two toroids that are wrapped in a certain way, whatever. Uh, the wire itself, very nice wire, not poly stealth. Um, but I, I don't, I've not seen this type of wire before, but it's 16 gauge, it's gasoline and oil resistant. Uh, it feels quite nice. Uh, the only thing I'm not too keen about are these little end insulators. It's just kind of some plastic and it's, it's uh, just wrapped in there once. I wish there were three uh, spots for strain relief, if you will. I was also concerned if it was, if the holes in here were gonna be big enough to uh, force my paracord that I have holding it up. And sure enough, it is. Uh, I'm gonna put this up in its stock configuration. If, if I'm not feeling these insulators, I do have a couple of these. I just picked these up at a ham fest. I think they were like a buck each. Uh, I'll use these and uh, some little wire clamps to hold that on. But for now, uh, we're gonna put it up and uh, see what happens. Okay, so the antenna went up uh, quite smoothly. It's pretty darn easy. And the insulators held just fine. I did put quite a bit of pressure on it to uh, raise the dipole. I don't have a center support, so it's just supported by both legs and uh, it's doing fine. Not as high as I would like it, um, but that's just, that's the situation I'm in. I have a very compromised uh, antenna setup house place, so. 
Uh, we're gonna get what we're gonna get. I wish I could get it up higher, but I can't. So anyway, uh, looking at the numbers, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I'm pretty darn impressed given the way this is installed. I mean, it's only the, uh, the, the Balan is literally like pretty much head level for me when I'm at the, at the peak of my roof. It's not high at all. And on 80 meters, we're 1.13 to 1 at 3.58 megahertz. We know it was low in the band. Uh, gets a little high towards the top, uh, a little bit over 3.3, but you can tell it's long. So if I shorten this, we can actually move that dip over. Uh, let's take a look at 40 meters. We're a little long there. We're 1.16 to 1 at 6.93 megahertz. Again, a bit long, but look at how wide band this would be. We'd be, if I were to shorten this, we'd be under probably 1.5-ish to 1 across the whole 40 meter band, so that's pretty awesome. 30 meters, not happening. <laughs> we might contain it, but it was like almost 10 to 1 uh, across the whole band. 20 meters, uh, we're a little bit higher. We're 1.54 to 1 at 14.04 megahertz. Uh, so again, if we shortened the uh, wire a bit, we could, we could get that dip more towards the center of the band. 17 meters, not advertised to be resonant, but we're actually just a little bit above 2 megahertz, uh, 2.0 to 1 uh, across the whole band, maybe 2.5 to 1 uh, at the top of the band. So uh, not even really advertised as a 17 meter antenna and it's not terrible there. Looking at 15 meters, 15 meters isn't uh, really enjoying life here. We're about 6 to 1 across the entire band. But again, this antenna is not advertised as a 15 meter antenna. Uh, and 12 meters, pay no attention to the numbers here. The marker didn't carry over from the last reading. 12 meters were a little over two to one across the whole band. So should be able to tune that up pretty well. That's pretty awesome. And 10 meters at uh, 28,425 were 1.6 to one. So uh, across the whole kind of lower portion of uh, 10 meters where the sideband would take place, we're, uh, we're looking pretty darn good there. And just for giggles, I took a reading on six meters. Not the happiest thing in the world. <laughs> uh, my radio won't really tune it very well. My external tuner uh, will, but we're, uh, we're anywhere from about three to one to about five to one across the entire band. So, so I'm gonna say this antenna is an absolute win. It does everything it's advertised to do. 80, 40, 20, and 10 are all resonant. It is long, we know that. It said it in the instructions, but we also get really not that bad of SWR on the bands that it's not even advertised for. So uh, some of the bands can tune with the internal tuner of my radio. I do have an external tuner from MFJ that I have in line for some of the bands that I need to sweeten up. Tunes it no problem. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this up. I'm not gonna shorten it quite yet. I'm gonna let it hang out there for a bit. I do expect any, any wire antenna to stretch a little bit over time, especially given that I just have it supported by the legs and I don't have any center support. So uh, I'll leave it out there for a couple weeks, maybe a month, see what happens, take some readings there. But uh, I'm very impressed with the overall quality of this antenna so far. Now, as far as the noise, <laughs> I didn't actually see a drop in noise. If anything, it actually went a little bit higher. And I would suspect because the antenna that I had up when I took the reading uh, for the noise before, that is an NFED half wave. We're just gonna say it's Brand X. It's not any antenna that I've reviewed on the channel. A company gave it to me. It's not really working so good. It's not resonant pretty much anywhere at all. It's, it's pretty good and terrible. This antenna is resonant, so I would expect the noise floor to be higher because noise floor gets higher when you get to resonance. So uh, that theory unfortunately didn't work out. I, I just, I have a horrible noise floor. It's, it's all electric noise. Uh, it's not the antenna's fault. I have horrible, horrible power line issues and, and there's transform. I've been fighting with the electric company since the day I moved here. So unfortunately that didn't work out, but everything else is working out great. So. Uh, I'm going to say this Radio Waves antenna is a great success and thank you guys at Radio Waves for supplying it with us, uh, to us and I will leave links in the description to Radio Waves if you want to pick one of these up and in the meantime, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at K8MRD and we will see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio. So, 73 guys.